Hello. Uh, I want to talk more about this module, the sound module. I've talked about this before in other previous videos. It's the GSI Gemini. If I stand in front of the window, it brightens things up a bit because it's bright behind me. It's the old gray version. So the screen is blue and the LEDs over here, right here, are, are blue as well. Um, and I say that because GSI comes uh, has come out with uh, a new version a little while back. It's now black and red. So all the lights are red, and and then the, the the steel casing is is more black than it is gray now. And there's some differences, uh, like the power switch is a button instead of a rocker two position switch, and um, there's an extra USB in the back. The power connector is, is different. It has that d dual barrel th thing connector thing going on instead of the single. Um, I don't know if you're interested in seeing that, but I'll show you anyway. Um, it's got that. It's like a it's like a guitar power thing. So it's got that one barrel um, as opposed to this double thing here. Um, and then it has the two MIDI imports. For over five pin, every sound module in a rack should have a MIDI through, um, and this one doesn't, unfortunately. So this will kind of have to be at the end of your MIDI chain, if you're running a bunch of MIDI cables like that anyway. Um, and so, absent from this, you'll find that there's no SPDIF connection. So on on the on the on the older version. There's this SPDIF connection where they're able to send a copy of the right and left outputs out through the digital input uh, or output. Huh. And uh, I think it runs at 100 and, no, um, 48, 48 bit rate, 48K. Uh, I'd like to look it up in the manual, but unfortunately, because GSI only sells this version without this bit of connection. The mention of it from the the downloadable user manual is gone. So you can't really even look it up anymore. Unless you go to like the Wayback Machine or something. Um, so I just mentioned that because it's important to have the same bit rate as your audio interface. So you got to run it at 48k because otherwise you'll get crackles and pops I think. Um, now this is kind of the audio interface I have. It's not exactly this one. Um, RME used to sell a Fireface UFX Plus. Uh, this is pretty much the exact same thing, only they're calling it the UFX 3 now because I guess it's a successor to 2, even though they already had the Plus. So this is a naming thing, naming scheme. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like this. It's a bit different here, but on the on the back on the back of of this interface will be um, not not it doesn't look like this, <laughs> honestly. This is this is a different interface. This is UFX two or something, uh, but it, it, they all have this AES slash EBU uh, output in in the middle there. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse. I don't know if and I don't know if you want to. <laughs> Um, general record mouse movements. I think hide cursor over projectors. Save project. Well, uh, anyway, I'll look at that later. A anyways, um, settings, settings. So you have <laughs> unbelievable this digital connection that comes through on uh, on like oops on like this RCA and it's I got this cable right it it goes from RCA to male XLR and this actually works so if you plug in so everything is set correctly, and you plug in the RCA into the back of this sound module, and then plug this XLR thing, which is which is uh, AES, right? AES sometimes is over the XLR like a microphone, and 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 and, and that plugs right into the back 
of, of say, this interface here into the input port, you'd get both channels. You get the, the right and left channels over this one cable. And it, and it actually works if inside your RME settings you set the uh, your AES to be compatible, I guess, with... Um, Oops. Let me see if I can find it. With SPDIF. Because SPDIF is actually what we be going for. So options, preferences. Is that where it is? I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know how these things work. Maddie face settings. Oh, well, it's kind of like this. Um, so there's a few different choices, like ADAT2 or AES slash BDIF. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, all that to say is that uh, this is this one. This the thing actually works, and 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 it's useful because um, if you've got a bunch of modules and keyboards, and you've used up all your inputs uh, on your mic pre's, and you don't have any line inputs left, usually the AES stuff is used for speakers, or it can be. But this is a, a way to sneak more channels in for for instruments and for making sounds through that digital connection. Um, and sometimes this uh, I, I think that a cable like this wouldn't work um, because I don't know, the ones and zeros, right? You could you could run into issues like that. So what you could do instead is to buy. Um, I don't know why it has a, a filter on. Stop! Stop having a filter. Stop. Oh my gosh! It's it, it's awful. It's terrible. I didn't tell it to do that. What you could do is get one of these. So this is from Hosa and. Basically, what this does is that it takes a, a little barrel cable to power it on. And once it's powered on, it's powered on. There's no, like, off switch. There's a pair of outputs and a pair of inputs. So what you would do with this is that you would take a regular RCA cable out from the Gemini and plug it into the input RCA of, of this thing. And then that would convert your RCA connector out to the XLR, the, your AES kind of standard, with like an AES cable like this, which is which looks almost identical or the same as a microphone cable. So you would take that to the output and then send that along into the back of your interface. It has that AES slash EBU uh, input port. So um, that's that's an alternative to use one of these things, uh, the Hosa model CDL three one three. It's the it's the coaxial AES slash EBU link. It it, it makes it, it it basically is this thing, only with with a little converter box in the middle. Since I don't know if you can always count on this cable working. Because if, if it's digital, right, then maybe this thing will sort out all the ones and zeros. Anyways, um, there's the power supply for it. Um, it's it's not... Uh, yeah, it's, it's not something that's relevant anymore. Um, but if, if you have... If you have the old version, right, the... The old, the old version of this thing, 
with this with this connector and you like using it because it gives you that clean audio instead of the audio that if you crank the volume up right all, all the way it could actually it kind of sounds a little bit noisy but 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 this it's 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 the, the digital connection is a bit more clean um more pristine but i think more susceptible to like clocking issues and crackles that way and maybe like digital distortion so you most likely you're going to use the regular audio outputs anyway which probably which probably is the reason why it's like so unpopular that that spit if way of doing things that is just not included on the on the new version so anyways that's all i wanted to point out today bye